All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, thank you for sticking around through that break. We have a big segment for you coming up right now. But first, just a reminder, if you would like to leave a comment or uh, respond to anything I have to say, remember, you can skip that line by going to streamelements.com slash GSMC Sports Network slash tip. Leave a tip, leave a message. It will come up on the sh- on the screen right there. We'll read it out for everyone. Again, that's streamelements.com slash GSMC Sports Network slash tip. We appreciate anything you leave for us. Uh, but without further ado, let's get right into our second segment here. There's been some major spring training news uh, all around the all, all around the MLB. Uh, players are starting to report. Pitchers and catchers reported last week. Uh, players are in, and spring training is officially underway in the MLB. And with that, we hit the MLB news cycle. It starts to flare up again. And some of the bigger news that's happened this week, uh, today. The Washington Nationals owner, uh, Ted Leonsis, has officially pulled the Washington Nationals from the, t- from the selling block. Uh, it was put on the sales block two or three years ago, unsuccessful, un- um, excuse me, unsuccessfully, obviously. Uh, but it is now officially off of the block, and the Nationals will not be sold. Now... This is a big news. This is a big news story, probably more for people in the Washington D.C. area because the people that were most likely going to buy it, buy the Nationals, were uh, the people that already own the Capitals and the Wizards and the Mystics, uh, and they have been not so popular as of recently with some proposed moves of the stadium outside of D.C. Um, but the Nationals will not be sold. Uh, at least as of yet. So, some other news coming out of spring training. We had a signing. Uh, Liam Hendricks signed a two-year deal with the with the Boston Red Sox. Uh, two-year deal. Now, Liam Hendricks here, he, he did have Tommy John at the end of last season, so he won't be able to come back until the end of the year. But he has shown the ability to come back from some major injuries and issues before. Obviously, he uh, came. He had leukemia uh, last season, came back, pitched, is still an elite pitcher. Uh, so he has the ability to be a very good closing piece for the Boston Red Sox, who could, who could use a nice little piece like that. Outside of that, some more, some news probably on the Angels front is where the biggest news of the day came out. Mike Trout, uh, one of the greatest players of all time and of our generation, uh, he officially said he did not want to be traded, and he actually is pushing the Angels to make a big move and compete. And I'm shocked that it's taking this for the Angels to make a big move. You talk about a guy in Mike Trout who, like I mentioned, is, you could make the argument, is the greatest baseball player to ever play the game of baseball. And he's only ever been to one playoff game. He had Shohei Otani on his team. He had Anthony Rendon. Now, granted, Anthony Rendon has not been healthy in his time with the, with the, with the Angels, but the whole team has never been good with him. And it really is one of those greatest failures in sports. The fact that you get a generational talent at 27th in the draft, and you do nothing with them. You do nothing with two of the greatest baseball players on earth at the same time. It really is a failure. And it's pathetic that the Angels have had no success at all it it's one of those things that's you you look back 20 years from now at a guy like Mike Trout and it's gonna hit it's gonna hurt his legacy the Angels need to make a run with Mike Trout this isn't this isn't a fan 
me talking. I'm a I'm a Nationals fan. But Mike Trout, for the sake of his legacy, they need to make a run. I personally don't want his legacy to be a failure, a one of failure, one of not being able to win. He is one of the greatest baseball players. He is uh, of all time. And he has not been able to get the support around him. He's made one wild card game, just one, in his entire career. And it's really sad. Now, the main issue for the Angels has always been pitching. And there's some great pitchers out there on the market. You have the reigning Cy Young winner from the NL still out there. Unsigned, which is insane, by the way. The amount of great players that still have not been signed five days into pat- pitchers and catchers re- reporting. Blake Snell is still out there. Now, he is a little bit older. But this is a guy that's won two Cy, Young in his, Cy Youngs in his career and is coming off just winning one. He has a deal on the table reportedly with the Yankees. But I think the Angels absolutely should go get him. That's a great fit for him with the Angels. It's one of those moves that, as loyal as Mike Trout is, and he's honestly probably too loyal for his own good, because he's never going to leave the Angels, but he should. He deserves to leave the Angels, and he never is going to. But him pushing this organization, pushing them to be aggressive, to make these moves... What they did, if you remember back to the trade deadline of last season, when the Angels made a bunch of head-scratching moves, they traded for some players, and then they lost a couple games, and they got rid of everyone. Back then, it was to it was a push for Otani, because if they didn't make the playoffs, he wasn't coming back. And then Otani leaves. And credit to the Angels for trying, but they gave up immediately. It wasn't, oh well, we're, we're done. It was, we are out of here. We are not competing anymore. Drop everything. Cut everyone. And it's, it really just shows the Angels' ownership. Uh, what they've done is probably, the, the owner there is probably the worst owner in all of sports. Definitely the worst owner in baseball. Probably the worst owner in sports having wasted so much talent, overpaying guys that don't need to be paid, underpaying guys that should be paid, not getting and making these moves that need to be made to make a competing team. The Angels are really a broken a broken team. And it's a shame because they've had these generational talents, because they've had so many good players that... They're just wasting. Another player on their roster, Anthony Rendon, switching lanes a little bit. And I don't know if it really is, because he came out today and he said that baseball has been a job. It's always been a job for him. He's never... It's He's never been his passion. It's been his job. And I don't know if this is a new thing with the Angels, but I remember him with the Nationals, he never seemed to have any of this. And we go back to that ownership. He got he got that massive deal. And he's been hurt ever since. And it happens. It It's not his fault that he's hurt. But coming out and saying that, I know a lot of players feel that way probably. A lot of players feel that it's their, it's their job. Like, if they weren't making money, they wouldn't be doing this, you know? It's a chore for them to go do this. A lot of players feel that way, I'm sure. But to come out and say it is a different thing. You know, most people in the public would kill to do what you are doing for a living. And I understand that's an unfair double standard to have. You don't have to love your job. You really don't. We don't expect people to. We don't expect I I don't expect baseball players or professional athletes to universally love their job, to universally 
fall in love with what they're doing and feel like they're never working a day in their life. We don't, we don't expect that. But it is that kind of thing that you kind of want to keep behind closed doors. Is the kind of thing that you want to not say out loud. And it's not an issue that he did. But now, if he doesn't have a good season, people are going to go back to this... Or if he gets hurt again, God forbid. People are going to go back to this interview and they're going to be like, Oh, he's not actually hurt. He's not actually doing all this. He's not... Hold on. Anyway, um, if he gets hurt, God forbid, there's going to be cries that, oh, he's not actually hurt, he's faking it, he doesn't want to go into work today, he's done. And it's a shame because player injuries are serious. You know, you never want to, I, I, it's a personal rule of thumb of mine to never do analysis based off of injuries, based off of potential injuries, based off of current injuries. Now, it's a little more fair to do it off current injuries because you know, but it's a personal rule of mine that I never do analysis based off of the potential for someone to get hurt, based off of, oh, they're injury prone, so that means that they're going to get hurt again, or they are faking an injury, or they are playing it up for the cameras. It's a personal rule of mine that injuries are injuries, we don't speak them into existence, and we don't we don't wish ill will or anything based on recovery because anything can happen with injuries. But other people aren't, you know. Anthony Rendon already has a lot of injury questions uh, in his career, and it's a shame because when he's been on the field, he's been so good. Um, but if anything, God forbid, is to happen to him this season. People are going to come after him, and he's not going to be in. And the public outcry on if it's a long-term injury or an injury that might take a little bit longer than other people's to heal. It's it's just a shame, uh, and it's it's one of those things that that I dislike about sports the most. Uh, the cover the the way we ridicule people for being hurt because uh, they can't control that. But on the other side of this break, we will jump into some NFL news, some NFL coverage. Uh, Franchise tags are coming up, so stay tuned. We will be right back. 